many thanks for joining me on Off the Press this morning, the segment where we dissect the national dailies and try to make sense of it. This morning with me in the studio is Ekene Ezeji. Ekene, good morning again. Good morning, yes, nice good to, to see you. Nice to have you this morning. So shall we begin with uh, this day newspaper? Uh, on the front page, Malami, conviction of P&ID directors, judicial proof of fraud. FG meets legal team on suit listed for 26 September. Lawyers express divergent views as court orders for future of companies' asset for tax evasion already displayed there on your screen. This story is on the front page and is continued on page 8. Military terrorists uh, fleeing, fleeing to North and Central Africa. On the front page, also continued on page 8. And then PDP crisis over House Minority Leadership Festers. Again, on page 8 of this day newspaper. Now, despite 80, $81 billion uh, debt burden, Nigeria seeks $2.5 billion uh, from World Bank loan. Bretton Woods Institution backs FG's bid to raise VAT. That's on the front page, as you've seen there, displayed and continued on page 9. I think that's about it. And then there's a picture story down here. That's about it on uh, this day. So the P&ID story is back mm, again. Like you, you knew we had to hit that mm. one first. Um, I, maybe I'm being a little optimistic, but I like the way it's looking now. Mm, but it's good to be um, You know, I started off when this story broke by saying, look, we're too sloppy. We're not mm. taking things seriously. We have a tidy approach to. And then I swung a bit and said, well, actually, when I started reading more articles, especially the Bloomberg investigative story, you realize that actually just because they've brought a case against you doesn't mean they have a case. Mm -hmm. They too have holes in their, in, their, in, their co in their case, so to speak. And now it looks like we're doing the kind of thing that I tend to have respect for, mm -hmm. which is you're, you're trying to come at it from a different angle. angle. So they're coming at you over in the UK where they feel they have the, the power and they're, they're threatening to confiscate your assets. But you also have the power here because mm. obviously there, there's some power you have, which is why you're able to bring a case against them. And if you can prove that, obviously, they've evaded tax, mm -hmm. then you've punctured a hole. In, in some of their answer. yeah, in some of their case, and and it, to some extent, yes, they're saying that you coerced the people to get the information, so that could be a defense for them. But let's see where this goes because I, I'm beginning to like the way things are, are mm. developing. So We're the, not feeling quite as vulnerable as we felt yeah, when the initially. the story first broke. Yeah, mm. there's a light of hope, so to speak. There, there. is, yeah, there is. Okay, yeah. and then it shows um, we have some intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. <laughs> so shall we just quickly go to the back page now of this day? And there is a column there, season of Ndi Amakeku. Um, find out what this is about with a picture of the vice president there. Um, this is by Okeike Chuku. Okeike Chuku, rather. Mm -hmm. um, please find out what this is about as displayed there on your screen. We move quickly now to the Nation newspaper, and it says House halts CBN's charges on deposit plan uh, panel to engage bank. You find that news on page seven of the Nation newspaper, and then flood sweeps through Oyo, Kwara, and Edo states properties affected. On page four of the Nation newspaper, Nigeria and World Bank in talks for $2.5 billion loan push against poverty. That's on page 11. And we have a picture story here, how Nigeria uh, can survive by B.C. Akonde on page 10, jilt oh come, jilted man commits mm. suicide on mm. page 6. Um, and then the big story also here again is $9.6 billion uh, judgment. Court liquidates P&ID and its affiliates. Firms for future forfeit assets to federal government. Nigeria gets advantage, says AGF, and legal battle in UK next week. Uh, so that's the big story. Dangote Cement creates 25 jobs. You find that on page 11, good news. Federal government states councils share 720 billion naira. You find that on page 11 of the nation newspaper. And um, all right. Can it, there's been a conversation about the flood uh, this time. We've seen so many information. And here we see, we see that the floods are sweeping through some states already. Is it that we're not taking uh, paying heed to warnings or we're just not in a good place? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how much people can do themselves. I think it's, it's still down to doing some fundamental infrastructural change. You may find that if you go to that area, I don't know, mm. they're not proper drainage systems. And Could you may be. find that even when they're drainage systems, yes, of course, you need to 
you know, instruct people not to throw waste into the drainage system and to block them. So you may find that just even the way our planning and our housing and everything is, 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 is gone about, it's not done in a, in a way that's orderly. So you find that, yes, there will be flooding, but the flooding, there's no passageway mm. being allowed for the floods to evacuate. So this is a problem that won't go away unless we do the needful, as people say, unless we do the basic things that we need to do, put them in place to enable us to move ahead. It's not enough to warn people. What would you have them do? Abandon where they have made their home. So mm. you need to do more fundamentally where you know that this is the problem. Begin to tackle the problem. It's not, it's not enough to just warn people about flooding. Mm. But I want to talk about the, the loan we're seeking from you World know, the Bank. World Bank. You know, and look, you know, it's the, the previous newspaper this day pointed out that we're already in debt to $81 billion. You know, a lot of times people are making, taking loans in our name. Mm. And yet the way they're expending the money, because people aren't necessarily against taking a loan. If you have a plan, you can take a loan to set up a business, you can take a loan. So it's an investment. Mm. But if you're taking a loan to squander it on, let's say, the cars for the House of Senate, Same. for example, then no, we're against that. If you're taking a loan to continue to sustain your lavish lifestyle, we're against that. So we want to understand what is this loan going towards? Because mm. now, unlike, you know, now we've seen what PNID, you know, that a case such as this can happen hmm. under our noses in our name and hold us to ransom as a nation That's where we're true. basically at risk of losing a fifth of our national foreign reserves. Now we all need to sit up every time you go out for a loan. We need to be asking you, what, is it what have you done with the previous loans? Mm -hmm. You know, where have you generated? Because uh, overall, the, the feedback we're getting is that we haven't come back, we're sluggish in coming out of recession. The optimism we had that somehow we're back on track, some of the suffering we've been enduring mm. is towards the target. We're not seeing it. So uh, much more now, we want you to give an account. We don't want you going and incurring further debt mm -hmm. in our name because it's in our name you're incurring it. Whilst we're not seeing any changes, you know, I, I heard, you know, this morning coming in, there was discussion going on about, you know, the, the fact that we're raising taxes so we can um, gather enough money to pay the minimum wage. Mm. And yet you're not ready to trim back your lifestyle your as, as leaders. You're not ready to change anything there. You're happy to keep spending, but you won't levy yourself. You rather levy us some more. Too. So we're not happy with you in mm. terms of, you know, governance now as a whole i'm just yes. saying that so don't assume that if you're going out to get a loan we're behind you we're not behind you because we haven't seen that you have been responsible enough with the previous loans you've you incurred yeah it. all right and then um household cbn's charges on deposit plan that conversation has been yes ongoing. another money matter and you know yeah. some people say it's good because it's meant to be pointing towards a cashless, cashless society uh, but some are also saying have you put things in place to uh, to ensure that the man who is not in a comfortable position who needs to spend the cash who needs to move the cash up and down because it's not convenient or because a lot of you times know. when you try to do cashless it even fails yeah you know have you done enough to make sure that that person is not being penalized twice so you go to pay cashless it doesn't work you now carry the cash you're being penalized for carrying the cash so you know let's not as it were burn the candle at both ends if you're trying to ensure that we don't carry cash and it's good for us then make sure the system works it's that seamless. enables us mm. and enables people to use that cashless no matter where they are in Nigeria because mm. they're rural areas they're remote areas where business is still being transacted but the systems are not in place to enable them do it in a cashless way so mm. let's make sure we're taking everyone into account and carrying everyone along. along. I think that's a very important point you've uh, made there especially in rural areas what would happen in, if business they don't really still have going on. access yeah. to make this work so it's taking us backward as even here in Lagos <laughs> I know how many times I've gone to pay cash I don't like oh, carrying yes. cash and I've been told sorry the POS isn't working go and withdraw what do I do you know mm. what I mean so I'm, I, it's not my fault it's not working but here I am. But again, because they set the threshold at 500,000, mm. we're assuming that it's not likely to happen that you go to make that kind of a payment and there's no cashless provision for mm. you to. So let, let's see how it plays out. But uh, the other argument, just very quickly, is that they should have given us more notice. They mm -hmm. gave us a day's notice, 24 hours, and it's in effect. You know, why did they not see fit to give us information, sensitize us maybe a month or two months before this kicked in? Mm. All right, um, and that's the same story we have. The PNID story is uh, what's here on the Nation newspaper, which we've already talked about. And back of the Nation newspaper is yet another column on citizen corruption with a picture of the EFCC chair and ICPC chair. Uh, please grab a copy to know what this is about. Hardball fixed the pothole. Uh, get a copy and find out what the Nation is about on this. And the next paper right in front of me is the Punch newspaper. It says, Nigeria approaches World Bank for fresh 2.5 billion naira loan. The same uh, conversation is here. you find that on page 30. PNID disowns officials as court orders firms asset for future. 
with fraud conviction, uh, 9.6 uh, 9 billion uh, dollars, a UK court judgment can stand. Uh, that's uh, the federal government saying conviction sham suspects no longer employees representatives <laughs> are saying <laughs> of course no one wants to be associated They're feeling with. the heat mm -hmm. <laughs> so you find that on page 21 and CBN restricts forex for importation of cassava products that's on page 31 uh, suspend deposit charges consult stakeholders reps tell CBN and that's on page 12 federal government okays 100 billion uh, naira for livestock scheme Pick seven states. Uh, please grab a copy and see what this is about on page 42 and which, are, which states are likely to have gotten this. And then xenophobic attacks, that's actually their big story. Nigerians boycott trips to South Africa. I haven't sold tickets to Johannesburg for two weeks, mm. an agent is saying. And Nigeria, South Africa proposed commission to end attacks on foreigners. And then there's a picture story of a very sad accident, scenes of an accident on the Enugu Potakot Expressway, wow. which happened on Thursday. That's quite unfortunate. And Nigerians react as Unilag invites MC Uluomo. That's on page four, pages four and five. Jill Tedman commits suicide in Lagos, again on pages mm -hmm. four and five. Um, Ogun Cortes killed 15 year old herbalist during supremacy battle. Wow. That's on page 42. Elumelu confusion as PDP uh, Board of Trust Trustees Chair Secretary disagree. That's on page 12. Ekiti mother, two children die and father hospitalized after a mala meal. What could have been uh, in that meal? You find out on page 4 and talks with bandits like Niger Delta Militants Dialogue IG. Uh, you find that on page 14. Mm. Can I what's catching Yes, please attention? remind me to talk about the talks with bandits if I okay. forget. But I just yeah. want to quickly say the PNID story, you mm. know, the proverb comes to mind. People in glass houses shouldn't throw, throw stones. stones. I, I'm not sure they, they were banking on us coming See after the them. I think they presumed that they'd intimidate us sufficiently to at least get us to, to the negotiating table mm. and get something from us. So I'm not sure they anticipated these tactics. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm mm. happy again. I hope it continues this and way and I hope we see something positive coming from this approach. Mm -hmm. And then somehow it affirms the action. You know, when this uh, came out, we had all of that statement from the government saying that we're not going to languish in this, so to speak. We're going to do something. Move Hopefully, forward. Yeah, so this is, I agree. I, I agree with you that this is something good. So the mm. banditry story. Yes, the, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, Again, I, I, I feel a little sad because, you know, the, a bandit is essentially someone with arms who is robbing people. And we've seen a lot of people, um, essentially their lives have been put in a very precarious situation. A lot of us won't travel without considering if we're going to collide with these people on the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've just basically made life for the average Nigerian completely different to what we used to know it mm -hmm. to be. I mean, even as we speak, we don't know Samson Siasia's mom. It, I know I'm, co I'm, con I'm combining the two bandits yeah. and kidnappers, but mm. they're all in the same culture as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. They don't mind terrorizing us. human life at the, just for money. Mm. So they've put money as king, and they're making the rest of us live as slaves in our own country. So I have, I'm very anti that kind of mm. mentality. And so to hear, you know, Talks, talks with them and then comparisons being made with them and the, and, and the amnesty that was offered to the Niger Delta people. Those people may have had a cause. I'm not saying the way they went about it was right, but they were essentially saying, look, you're, you're taking our resource mm -hmm. and you're leaving us Sh MC naked, Hunter. yeah, with nothing to show for it. So you could somehow sympathize with, you didn't like the way they were going about it, but you somehow had some sympathy for them. And they were a bit targeted in the way they were going about their own, I think they kidnapped Operations. as well. So let me mm. not even give them too much of a green light. So, but bottom line is, I'm not sure telling people that, oh, you know, um, we're going to talk to you. It's too rampant at the moment. I'm even looking at capital punishment. Personally, mm. I would opt for that. You know, send out a very clear message to say, look, if you continue to treat human life as That's something true. you can haggle with just to enrich yourself, even you know, for 600,000 Naira, you take someone's mother and keep them keep in custody. Them. I know of someone recently whose son and wife were kidnapped, and despite the fact that the money was paid, they were killed. Oh, no. Now imagine the trauma for that man, he's his only son, a teenage boy. And imagine the trauma for Samson Siasia's mom, no matter what, even if you release her till tomorrow, she will not be the same woman again. That's true. Not to mention numerous stories around, people who have suffered at the hands of these people who only care about themselves and their money. Mm. I'm sorry, you need to send a message out that discourages Clearly. this. Yeah, because it's becoming too rampant, mm. it's becoming too normal. I don't even recognize Nigeria today. You know, if I look back maybe five, six years ago, where has it come from? So you need to discourage we're not talking, this is not the time to be talking about having conversations Dialogue. with them. You need to say, look, capital punishment. I, I know once upon a time we used to you know, shoot people mm. who were caught. 
maybe shoot a few. I'm, I'm sorry. I've never. The reason I'm saying this is that I've never really opted for this in the past. I wouldn't want it. But the way I see lives being put in At this risk, position, and the way danger. I hear the stories I hear are so heartbreaking. You really ought to send a message out that if you're going to deal like this, we're going to deal with you in kind. Mm. Not, not have conversations with them. It's quite unfortunate. Uh, the insecurity situation is frightening every day in yeah. the country. Uh, thank you for your thoughts there. And then on the back page of The Punch is yet another column, A New Pace of Governance, Friday Musings with Ayo. Please grab a copy of The Punch newspaper and know what uh, this is about. And we have right here again The Vanguard, which is... Uh, the last paper here for review this morning. Again, their big story is the PNID. Nigeria bids to quash $9.8 billion uh, award in UK courts. Now, FG in fresh talks with World Bank <laughs> over $2.5 mm -hmm. This is really a concern. Mm. Yeah, all the papers have got it mm. this morning. So you find out the details of this on page 19 of the Vanguard newspaper. Why we dialogue with the bandits. That's from the IGP. So please take a look on page 9 as displayed there on your screen and know why this need, we should even engage in any dialogue with the so And whether it will yield uh, results. Whether it will yield any results really in the positive direction. Now directing living in bondage sequel a dream come true. That's Ramsey Noah. Something uh, on entertainment for you there on page 22. Now NEC raises concerns over clash with new economic council. That story is on mm, page 39. An interesting one. Yeah, and then we have a picture story. $876 uh, uh, CPDC NPDC agreement. Picture story there. Please find out what it is about on page 5. Nigeria lost $11 trillion to pass sector corruption since 1999. That's a report that's out there. Body of Science calls for creation of separate court to handle election cases. Interesting. That's, that's on page nine. Why so? Find mm. out on page nine. Ampa, don't deceive us, T TCN tells discourse. That's on page 10. But that closure means fortune for rice millers and poultry farmers. Emir Fele is saying that on page 11. And Lagos, how we are coping with bad roads, refuse, insecurity, and others on stake, uh, stakeholders are saying that on uh, page 42. All of these things that have been identified are real issues really in, in, mm. in Lagos, the bad roads and of course insecurity. Uh, so please find out for yourself uh, what uh, what's this is about, all of these stories. Uh, can I, is there any you want yes, to talk Yes, the next on? story, okay. you know, once you read it, it reminded me because I had uh, mm. gone over it and it's it's Interesting, I, I don't want to use the word curious even, because NEC obviously is headed by the vice president, Yemi yeah. Sibanjo. And, you know, we heard recently how the president changed the people yeah. at the helm EMC. of a new committee who uh, were essentially EAC. almost like uh, so the economic advisory Co council. Commit, council, committee council. or council. Yes, council and and council. now the, the problem here they're saying is that they seem to be almost trying to usurp the area of responsibility of the neck. So some people had said, oh, there's a conspiracy theory that mm -hmm. you know, the president is trying to dumb down the influence of the vice president. I said, how I much further would he that. dumb him down? This is a very skilled, intelligent man, and we haven't seen much from him. A lot of people are saying he's not, you know, he's capable of so much more. It's almost mm -hmm. like someone operating at 20% when mm -hmm. he has so much more to offer mm -hmm. and in the shadows. And if you now take away what little influence he has, what you know, he may as well not be there. He's mm -hmm. just a poster boy, you know, for people who feel you, you want to reinforce in their mind that something useful is going on in the presidency. So the fact that also, this is part of what I'm following, the spokesperson for the NEC queried this and said, look, we're not happy with the way you're this coming into a... our lane. It's strange, isn't it? Because for me, it's almost like a husband and wife mm. thing and you're sending someone like a go-between. Mm. Why should the vice president not have a direct word with the president? With the Why person. should this be happening at all? Mm. Are you saying the president didn't consult with the vice president over this? It, it, it doesn't look like even at the very core, at the very apex, things are as they should be. I don't want to go beyond that yeah. and just say, look, I'm not necessarily satisfied with, with that headline and mm. I feel... Let's watch this space and see what happens with that story. Mm -hmm. You're, I mean, an analyst who was here also uh, during the week mentioned the same thing and said even in the coming days we'll see more conspiracy theories. Yes. We don't know which one it is. But, uh, <laughs> they say where there is smoke, there is fire. <laughs> yes, true, and that's true, by the way. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see what uh, turns out in the coming days. And on the back page of the Vanguard newspaper is the sports news. Brazil versus uh, Nigeria. Tight announces strong squad today. Super Eagles drop one place. That's FIFA rankings. And the Tigers move to place up 
uh, moved 10 places up in FIBA World Rankings. Ezenwa Efion lead 18 others in Chan Eagles to Togo. So please grab a copy of all of these newspapers. Yeah. Well, well done to the Tigers. Yes. They, they don't seem to be letting us down at mm -hmm. all, you know, just going from strength to strength. To strength, so. and that's Impressive. good Impressive, yeah. Mm, that's good news there. And that's where we'll wrap it up this morning on Off the Press. And many thanks, Ekene, for being with me. My pleasure, me, as always. Uh, this morning. And we'll do this again next week uh, on by 8.30, Monday to Friday, every day on Plus TV, Africa. Plus TV Africa, we do this off the press where we tell you the headlines and you grab copies of the newspaper to find out what they are about in details. And I am Amaka Ukoye. Have a great day.